What stopped you from committing suicide? How mad my mama would be. She'd follow me to hell to beat the shit out of me. My cat. Twice. First time, he bit my hand and I dropped the knife, leaving me open for him to jump onto my chest. I couldn't not cuddle him. It allowed me to come back down. Second time was last week. I promised him I wouldn't die on his birthday. Almost broke that promise. My cat refused to leave me alone. Random dude grabbed me back to the sidewalk. He had noticed I was unhinged and walked from the other side of the road. I tried to take a step and he just pulled me back. Nothing is worth losing your life over. Made me realize everyone has got a shitty life. You just do little stuff to fill the day and try to achieve daily goals to give you a sense of accomplishment. Come night, hopefully, you have enough stuff to do tomorrow and are tired enough to just sleep, ignoring the weight on your chest. My brain's inbuilt survival instinct kicked in hard as I was passing out from inhaling a bag of carbon dioxide. Absolute terror and nothingness, thankfully it forced me to breathe deeply and somehow I made it, don't remember much but I obviously woke up and vowed never to attempt again. Felt euphoric for a few weeks after. Took another 12 years to get proper therapy, but I'm alive and doing well. I hope everyone with dark thoughts have the best life possible which is filled with happiness. Have a blessed day. Fear and knowing that suicide is the one door that will never close. Not feeling it today? That's okay, there is tomorrow, or even a year from now. There is no rush. Once things get truly unbearable, I can just get up and do it. It's an option that isn't going away. I mean, I will die anyway, whenever I want to or not. That's a comforting thought as well. Damn it Reddit this post has me crying because some of these stories are absolutely beautiful. I'm glad you are all here still. My energy. Being so down and out, didn't have the energy to do it for as much as I wanted to, so I just went to bed and that was just one attempt. The other time ended with me getting slapped in the face by a friend while drunk and wanting the alcohol to kill me. Slapped the shit out of me, forced water and food down my throat, and sent me to bed. I guess the moral of both attempts is to just sleep it off and remember that tomorrow is gonna be better than the previous day. Islam, plain and simple. When I was 15 I had planned a date to sneak into my dad's gun safe skate to the park and shoot myself with a 9mm when it. See to the night I got to the park sat down on a bench and suddenly a girl I never met before asked me what I was doing out so late. I ignored her but she kept asking me so I told her just here to look at the stars. She asked for my name I told her my name I asked for hers she gave it to me I we sat there in silence for an hour and she asked me why I had a gun in my pocket and eventually it I broke down telling her everything. Of course she wasn't expecting that so in complete shock she just hugged me. She called the police explained the situation and I was put in a mental hospital for about two weeks and I still go to therapy I when was let go from the hospital they gave me all my stuff which included a note with the girl's number telling me to call her when I get out. I called her and me and her have been best friends for 10 years. My little sister, couldn't imagine how broken she'd be if I suddenly just disappeared. That was 8 years ago. Music. The only thing that has kept me from eating a bullet for the last 12 years is heroin. F.E.A.R. My kids. L.S.D. I just wasn't committed to it. I made excuses saying it was family and friends that stopped me but honestly I waited, multiple times actually, for something to push me over that line of actually doing it and it never happened. Afterwards I tend to slowly get better and then I'm hit with depression again for whatever reason, quite tiring I might add. My cats. I'd separated from my wife, so all the bills were solely on my shoulders. Sleep for dinner became quite common. Just surviving one day to the next, nothing fulfilling going on. The thought crossed my mind a few times, but nobody would be able to take in the cats, and I didn't want them to be split up should that happen. Things turned around though, so I've got that going for me. Pride. No one and nothing on this planet's worth taking my own life. 
On my worst days, I'll remind myself don't let the bastards win. If I just checked out entirely, things would most definitely go to shit. Me sticking around is for the greater good. It would be like Superman just leaving the world to deal with Lex Luthor, Batman just letting the Joker have his way. Without the resistance, Darth Vader and the Death Star would have gone unchecked. Somebody's got to stand up to Hydra and not just bend over and take it. Look at Professor Xavier, man can't even walk, but he keeps doing whatever he can to keep Magneto in check. Fucker's powerful, and he could fuck the world entirely, but if the X-Men just gave up, well he fucking would. There are lots of bad people in the world, and there are lots of good people in the world, and who tf knows how many of each, but if I die, there is one less good person in the world, and that is unacceptable, because we've already lost enough. I realized that someone was going to have to tell my friends that I took my life. I've always been the therapist friend, so I've helped my friends through so much shit, I've seen so many goodbye, ill or always love you texts, and I've talked my friends out of suicide. I realized I couldn't leave them alone. I couldn't leave them without a shoulder to cry on, without someone to listen no matter what, without a bubbly ray of light. I refused to leave my then best friend, and in the few years I was seriously struggling, my brother opened up to me about his struggles, and I couldn't leave him without his little brother to support him. I definitely couldn't leave my grandma or my mom. I was my grandma's favorite grandchild, no doubt, and her and I were incredibly close. If I successfully took my life, she would have lost it. In my mom's only kid, bro and I have different moms, same dad, and her and I are basically best friends, I couldn't let her lose her only kid. Now, more recently, my reason is because I refuse to leave my boyfriend, who's the light of my life. I've been clean from self-harm for over a year, and I couldn't have done it without him. I'm doing a lot better now, and I actually have a future to look forward to, and I'm glad I didn't commit suicide. Realization suicide is a permanent solution to a non-permanent problem. That the bad times I've had make my good times that much better. Nothing, still thinking about it. Judgment in my absence. The weapon was on safe Lamau. This was back in like 2011 when I was in 7th grade. Stupidity kills. Yup. Not with me. Eh. Ran out of money and had no income. Called my mother up and asked if I could have some money and she gave me some. I currently now have an income but things are getting tough and I'm at the same place I was 8 years ago. My savings account just lost a digit due to car repairs. I'm late to this but I think typing it out would be good for me. I had a fucking terrible acid trip and my friends pulled me out of a bonfire I very purposefully jumped into. A blur of pain and emotion, I awakened I swear to god the stars looked like my now wife's face. My friends and love stopped me from death. For me, it's two things. 1. Knowing that I would miss everything in my children's lives and I didn't want to miss it. 2. Not wanting my husband to blame himself for the rest of his life and possibly kill himself as a result. Honestly, the fact that it would hurt my parents too much. My brother disowned us because he's trans and assumed my parents would disown him and thus left without even telling us and then transitioned, my parents have tried reaching out, but he still won't speak to them. I was their only other child, and couldn't leave them like that. Whenever I had thoughts of ending my life, I reminded myself that they'd never recover. My own mind. I thought I didn't deserve to die and the only suitable punishment was for me to keep on living because that was so much harder. Clearly I was keeping myself alive that way, but it didn't really sink in that I had effectively talked myself out of killing myself without realizing it at the time. I was unwilling to create that experience for my daughter. One sure way to mess up her life would be to do that. I dropped out of uni, and started doing sound for bands, because it was the only thing that made me happy. Told myself I'd do that till the money ran out, because at the time it wasn't really enough to live off, but I still had my student loan. Money never quite ran out, that was 8 years ago now, still do sound for bands. 
the thought of failing and causing enough permanent damage that I wouldn't be able-bodied enough to kill myself afterwards. Common sense smile. Laziness. Why bother trying to kill myself when someone else can do it and get punished? My current GF. I was convinced and dead set to take my life this year. I had it all planned out. So I said to myself why not make the most out of it by hooking up with some stranger before I go. So I went on a dating site and swiped on whoever. Then I met her and we had an interesting conversation. At first I was just being nice to get in her pants, I know that is a dick move. But then after a few weeks of talking I really got interested in her. Then we started dating, and it felt like I cannot die yet now. And now that we are officially together things are definitely different. I love her so much and I want to build a life with her in the future. Thank <music> you.